the scapegoat for the group, the kid to blame when everything went wrong and you lost the tug of war or I don't know, the, the hard boiled egg contest or what have you. <laughs> right. Again, again, mm-hmm. a bit of an outcast, but still part of your group. And so you can pick on him, but no one oh, else no, in right, the right. group. Yeah, exactly. Can. Sure. Right. And so they watched as these these kids formed a super organism, basically made of four parts and became a larger organism. Okay, makes sense. And you can probably think back to your examples of kids that you hung out with or things that you've watched. Like we could probably look back at say the stand or uh, not the stand, uh, stand by me, right? Stephen King. Yeah, the, st- probably, the stand is very different. <laughs> the stand is very different. Not that funny. Um, stand by shining. me. <laughs> stand by me. And you probably can take those four boys and look at what archetype they fit into. But after a few weeks, the researchers asked those six magical questions. What would happen if we did this? What would happen if we did this? Seven seven words. Um, The researchers reorganized the cabins. They took four of the cabins and they took the four leaders and threw them into one cabin together took the four jokers, the four bullies, and the four nerds and organized them. Mm. Now, knowing what we've talked about, Brian, what do you think happened in the cabin of leaders? So you have these four leaders that are suddenly one big group. Well, it was pretty, you know, probably wildly dysfunction because they, you know, they're all, they were all now accustomed to either in that setting or in general, just in their lives, you know, they have traits that are there that are more likely to thrust them to the front. And so it, there was either, immediate conflict a or and or i guess that same pecking order one two oh, one two three four revealed itself again but just in that dynamic where where there is you know a, a one a one b one you know, etc so 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 one of the four was the leader but then of those four leaders one of them then became the outcast one of them became the bully one of them became the nerd within that within that limited atmosphere bingo there was right. a little bit of conflict about an hour long, and then the boys reassembled into those four hierarchical roles. So one kid was the leader of leaders. One kid went from leader to bully. One kid went from leader to the Joker. And one kid went from the penthouse to the basement and became the nerd. (laughs) Right, right. Now, at the time of this writing, it looked like, he doesn't really talk about what they did with the other three roles, but research was indicative that it was heading the same way in the other groups. Right, right. So that kid who's in the nerd group and is the nerd, he is the nerdiest of the nerds. <laughs> but one becomes Maximum the leader nerd. of the nerds. <laughs> right. And um, and again, it's a limited number, right? But it, it helps to explain how this happens in a quote unquote natural way and how the people just kind of fall into these roles. So then this research team looked back into history, doing a lit review, going back and looking time, and they found some sociological research, and I'm guessing it was some of the earliest sociological research. It was done in Chicago, and they looked at Chicago teenage gangs. Mm. And guess what they found in the 1920s? So roughly 55 years before their study. Oh, I assume more or less the same. The same thing, the same roles, leader, bully, joker nerd um the bulk of this comes from howard bloom's 1995 book the lucifer principle a scientific expedition of the forces of history and daniel j friedman's 1979 book human sociobiology a holistic approach i also think that that there's because some for for some reason in my mind as i've been turning this over i imagined three other roles Hmm. and that's going to lead us into next week's because I'll go first next week and we'll pick up with part two next week. Um, I was thinking of three other roles that probably exist. And you can see how these three would get subsumed within the other four. But I often see the role of Lieutenant who would be like, not quite the leader, but he's like the leader's best buddy who everybody turns to when the leader's not there. Right. I think there's also typically a scholar Oh, he's the smart kid of the group. Hey, you know, whose name is usually Brains Brainington or something like that. <laughs> right. And then, and then finally, there's a kid who's usually in the middle of the social hierarchy who is seen as the peacemaker. He's the one who wants everybody to get along, tries to resolve conflict within the group, 
and is also usually the kid that reaches out to other social groups to try to broach peace. Like if you're playing against another group of kids on the basketball court or whatever. Right, right, sure. Now, I don't know because this isn't part of the study, but that's just stuff that I've seen. Now, what's going to happen next is uh, I'm pretty much done with this week, but looking into next week, what I've got is, and you people certainly don't have to do this, but I know you're going to do it. There's a documentary from 2002 that's available on YouTube called Boys Alone. And there's a, there's a girl equivalent called Girls Alone. It's from 2002. It's directed by Kim Flitcroft. And here's what the documentary is about. And this is what we'll talk about next time. You and I can talk about the documentary. Anybody listening who's like binging on it, you might want to stop after this episode <laughs> right. and watch it because uh, we'll make, se- Brian make, and I'll make more sense. Right. We'll make sense of it. But seeing this, I think you're going to, it's a very enjoyable documentary. I'll put it that way. And it really addresses a lot of the stuff that I've talked about in this first part. Here's the basic, <laughs> here's the basic premise of the documentary to get you started. 10 boys for five days are basically given control over one house. They're 11 to 12 year old boys. They've had a cooking course. They have a camera crew during the day, stationary cameras at night and access to parents, the production crew and psychologists and a nurse if necessary. Other than that, they're left alone in this house to fend for themselves for a week. And that's what the documentary is about. And (laughs) keeping in mind everything we've talked about about pecking orders and hierarchy and roles we're going to see how this plays out over this documentary and try to apply some of what we talked about to what we're seeing what we will see in this documentary boys alone it's available on youtube okay so boys alone and in boys alone does piggy die (laughs) 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 because this is feeling Uh, a lot like lord of the flies to me it, th- there's, or, or, there's, and or the island of Dr. Moreau, one of the two. I'm not sure. I'm there, not there's sure one. Which. There's one point where you, where you're like because I don't want to get too much into it, but the crew will only step in unless some, something very dangerous is about to happen. Unless someone's bleeding, right? And, and there's one point where the crew steps in, and you're like, oh, thank God! You know, you're just like something bad was about to happen. But it is a, a really well done documentary. It's about 45 to 50 minutes long, and we will talk about what happens in that. And then next week, what I'll do is we'll talk about the documentary and I will try to conclude with some thoughts uh, from a fellow named Aristotle. Not that Aristotle, I'm talking about the other Aristotle, the one mm. who played for the 79 Lakers. <laughs> and um, no, seriously, I'm, 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 gonna ra- I'm gonna wrap up with uh, some thoughts from Aristotle and some thoughts from, in my opinion, an equally great thinker, Kurt Vonnegut, to kind of wrap this subject up next time we talk on dream idiots so there you go that's part one of let's get organized all right so i I will dutifully do my homework i hope everyone else out there will um will hopefully do the same but if not it'll it'll still make sense we'll we'll, we'll make sure we'll we'll give it enough context so (laughs) so you can actually still follow along that's fascinating stuff though yeah it really is and it's it's also if this helps the documentary is british so it does have that kind of uh very dry british wit to it where Uh kids are calling each other prats and wankers and it's it is it is very funny stuff yeah good, good. When, when you were going down the list though i mean I, I was thinking thinking in my head um about various groups that, that you know that i've been in like you know, when i was in that group i was the bully when i was in that group i was the nerd when i was in that group i was the leader. Mm-hmm. like oh yeah that, that that feels true so far yeah and and that's that's kind of where what i want to bring it to is is how do we move between these roles in a fluid manner And that's kind of where I take things next time when we get into part two. So we'll see how it goes on Let's Get Organized part two on the next Dream Idiots. All right. Well, thanks a lot, folks. Thanks for listening. Please share and subscribe and do all those good things. You can visit us on dreamidiots.com. You can email us at dreamidiotspodcast at Gmail uh, or on Facebook at Dream Idiots. And um, tell us what you think. Tell us what you hate. Any of the above. And thanks and, for tuning in. And, you know, I would like to say that Dream Idiots against napalming puppies since May 2022. There you go. We're, we're, yeah, we're taking a stand. We are. Don't napalm puppies or people for that matter. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye.